we must understand that what are the bond dissociation energies of molecules it is very important to understand then only we can say that okay which molecules can easily form radicals and which molecules are very difficult to form radicals that's very important so then our question that means is is there any significance of bond dissociation energy with radical formation and for that this is the table which i have used you can see this is a bond dissociation energy you see from water water has a very high bond dissociation energy right and as soon as you you can see that hi has a bond dissociation energy much lesser than hcl hcl is pretty strong 431 kN per mole mm -hmm. on the other hand if you can make a peroxide the bond dissociation energy comes down to 213 kN per mole because oxygen oxygen has lone pair of electrons oxygen oxygen bond is weak and you can easily fragment this bond at a little high temperature and you can break this bond easily so that means thermolysis of this hydrogen peroxide or a photolysis of hydrogen peroxide is easy possible and we can make the OH dot radicals similarly if i put if i substitute this hydrogen with methyl groups then there is further electron density over the oxygen and then i can cleave this oxygen oxygen bond much easier easily and then the bond dissociation energy further comes down so that means you know dimethyl peroxide moiety the bond dissociation energy is so low that we can actually use much lesser amount of uh, temperature to break these bonds from a methoxy radical so you, it is very clear from this bond dissociation energies that which molecules are easy to form radical we can easily understand now that why we are so fortunate to have this our life around that water has a, such a high bond dissociation energy, right? And on the other hand, some of these molecules uh, we can actually make or we can synthesize or exist in nature which have a much lower bond dissociation energies. So this is something very important, a uh, basics of physical chemistry that to understand that where radicals forms faster, easier, where the molecules can be much stable like these type of molecules. <coughs> How a radical reaction is different to other common reactions? That is very important. Let us see some of the very basic reactions. This is of course a radical reaction. But then, what are these type of reactions? This here, the alkoxide is reacting with an acid bromide, HBr. And here this alkoxide is reacting with a methyl bromide. So here, it's an abstraction of the hydrogen, right, to form the alcohol. You can see, so it's a proton removal, and here it's a SN2 type of a reaction, right? It is uh, you are forming a ether type of a molecule with a bromide formation in both of the cases, but here it's an again an abstraction of H to form the alcohol. We have just seen this type of reaction uh, in the case of the uh, vitamin E and here you can see that alcohol is again formed with the formation of the bromine radical. So these are very easy to show as you can see in case of the radical reactions I will have to show a mechanism to a half arrow but in case of a normal reactions where the molecules are electron paired molecules, diamagnetic molecules we show the arrow with the, with the full, full uh, arrows right these are with the half arrows. So this is the basic difference, a uh, diamagnetic molecule reacting with a spin pair molecule, so spin pair molecules react in this type of, in this way, as well as a radical can react like this. Now please remember that this bromine dot is now a free radical and it can now start reacting and you know that a free radical can, initi can be initiated, it can propagate and then it can also terminate will come these things into our in the latter slides. So let us see what are the different methods to generate radicals. It's very easy. We have just shown you that if we can take some molecules which are 
having low bond dissociation energies, right? We can break these, right? So radicals form from spin paired molecules. So it's a spin paired molecule. You all agree with me? It's a diamond molecule with a very weak bond dissociation energy. We just saw that it can be even up to 150 kilojoules per mole, right? So with a light or heat, we can make two equivalents of this alkoxy radical. We can also use this type of addition of an electron, single electron transfer to a ketone to form a, to form a ketyl type of a radical anion. So that means we can start with a spin paired system, a diamagnetic molecule, and then we can make some radical systems. Very easy to understand what is happening. Electron is coming here, right? And then this carbon oxygen double bond, right, is forming a single bond, right? And then you can have these canonical structures where this spin can be over the oxygen minus and this charge can be over the carbon bond minus. So those can be the two uh, canonical structures of this radical, the resonating structures of the radicals. Radicals can also form from other radicals. So I can take three examples of radicals. I can use now spin paired molecules. So this is an abstraction or a substitution of this yz molecule so it forms x y and then the z is now removed as a radical right you are forming a z dot radical from a spin paired and a radical right here it's a y and z is double bond that means i can take like the alkene alkene reacts with a radical right and then you can have a radical system right if this x dot comes over here and then the spin comes over here so that means the spin is being transferred from x to z that is what you were saying the spin was originally it has come over z because of this double